this week's episode of The Real Grill. Today we will be reviewing the action comedy movie Bullet Train. In this movie we follow Brad Pitt's character Ladybug, an unlucky assassin trying to complete a mission to steal a briefcase on a bullet train in Japan. Sounds simple. It is, until you add the four other assassins also on the train. It's full of laughs, violence and of course a speeding train. That's all I'll tell you about the plot. Continue watching that to hear our thoughts on how good or bad this movie did. Enjoy. Right, so, I just want to know at what point did you guys like realize that you weren't actually watching um, an actual like actual actors? You were watching a cartoon. Like, what, was the, what was the turning point? I mean, you, like? fairly early on, I believe. <laughs> it, it kind of going in, in the craziness, didn't it? Yeah, just, yeah, think, fairly early on. To be fair, it was. Yeah, it was... <laughs> This movie did not take itself very seriously, which is at one of the all. reasons why I love it. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of the reasons why I love it. It's I, I, think, I think the trailer itself kind of gave me that. Yeah, yeah very exactly. Trailer. It was very kind of cyberpunky. Car, car, like, you, I think it could definitely be like an anime CG film and it would be really yeah. enjoyable to watch. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think it definitely gave me that vibe from the trailer really mm. early on. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I did. I did actually feel like I was watching an anime. That's the thing. I was like, I was like, yeah, I, I, I understand that they're actual people, but this is not real. Like, this is not reality. This is not how the world works. <laughs> no, like, definitely just, not. No. Yeah. As I, I, as I did say, it was react. based on a Japanese book by a Japanese author yeah. who kind of I think likes this kind of stuff. So. Yeah. I, th I don't know, he could be like a guy who writes manga as well if he wanted to, because yeah, it's just that kind of story where they're using a real life setting and stuff with assassin stuff, but they like being ridiculous with it. Uh, and I like the fact that um, it's so heavily relied on like luck and stuff. That was a really cool uh, oh, yeah. object. Uh, yeah. 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 So many times. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, feel, I, I like the hilarious contrast of the main character belying his bad luck. Yeah. But also the contrast of how much good luck he gets, but the bad <laughs> luck, it, it seems perfectly balanced. He's, he's bad, his luck's so bad because he keeps getting into these situations, but he keeps surviving those situations as well. Yeah. Like, so it was kind of hilarious to know how lucky and how unlucky he is yeah. at the same time. Yeah. So does anyone want to get into the narrative? Like, just give a quick rundown of the story. Uh, it <laughs> I know it's easier said than done, but... Uh... <laughs> I can try. I guess I can try. I mean, you know, obviously, Brad, Brad Pitt. We can all pitch in. We can all pitch in. Yeah, we can all pitch in. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, he, so he he plays this sort of. I don't know. Is he is he like an assassin? Is he like an undercover agent? I think he's a, like mercenary. a mercenary. Yeah, mercenary. I suppose it's a better oh, yeah. way to describe mercenary, it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, basically, he's been a, he's been assigned to retrieve this suitcase. From a train, like a, a magnet. Is it what's what? What do you call it? Bullet train. Oh, a bullet train. train. Yeah. Name of the movie. And it's, <laughs> it's, it's a, I think it's a double entendre as well. Bullet train, as in like obviously bullets on the train, uh, all over the place. Yeah, so it's kind of clever. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of clever title actually when you think about it. Um, so yeah. Anyway, and obviously he's in Japan. This is like Tokyo, I think. Uh, so it's sort of yeah. like the epicenter. Um, and yeah, he so he manages to retrieve the suitcase from these two. Uh, bro brothers, quote unquote, air quote unquote. Um, the only, but I'd say the peril of the story is basically he's just trying to get off a train and things things keep stopping him. From, <laughs> just random things <laughs> keep stopping him from getting off this train to the point where, and not to like spoil it, or well, we're gonna spoil it anyway. But basically, the the train gets to his final destination and he doesn't get off the train. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's like a it's a, basically it's a hilarious sort of action thriller i'd say um you know set in the wacky mind of someone i could only describe as a tarantino purist who is like obviously trying to <laughs> trying to trying to recreate a sort of kill bill but with like trains and craziness i don't know but... I, 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 a bit of guy ritchie in there as guy well ritchie, guy yeah, ritchie is sure. yeah Everyone's what i would call it it's like a guy yeah. ritchie type and i'm a bit it. biased because i love these guys the guy yeah. these guy ritchie type of movies so like yeah. i knew i was gonna love this the way it was going mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so he, so he, it's a locked room scene about being locked room. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So he, he, the main, the main character, Lady he's literally like, like he's, he's just trying to do a simple job. He's trying to do a super simple job of stealing the suitcase, and when it kind of goes to goes to hell, he just wants to get off the train. But he kind of gets dragged into what is it like, a whole family drama 
um, yeah. between obviously the, the the main white death character and the daughter and the son. Um, a revenge story as well between the elder, the white death, and the white death, and the person the white death confuses ladybug to be um, yeah. and then obviously you've got obviously the drama with lemon the kind of like the, the random kind of chaos thrown into the mix which i think lemon and um tangerine, tangerine. <laughs> lemon tangerine. Is tangerine. Lemon and tangerine. so it's kind of like he, he literally just gets thrown into a chaotic situation with multiple characters have their own agenda and it was really funny to watch that unfold and watch him interact with all oh and i forgot obviously yeah the number of range character is um the, the wolf the guy who's the Mexican, going, for, yeah, yeah, yeah. going for revenge against his family, and also the Hornet as well, who's there for an actual yeah. dog. So it's really wacky. He gets oh, yeah, a really, really, yeah. very crazy situation he gets thrown yeah. into. <laughs> well, I, one thing I did like is that you don't find out to the end that it's all because of Ryan Reynolds. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's all in the fake and I did it. It's just a, yeah, I'm just a replacement guy. <laughs> I'm just I'm just filling in Ralph, you know what I mean? I'm just like, <laughs> but when he showed up I was I just not expect him to be there because he's not credited or anything. Yeah, because yeah, with all the cameos you saw, you saw like Charlie Damon and stuff. Yeah. As soon as Brian Reynolds came out, I was like, yeah, of course it is. Of course it's Brian Reynolds. <laughs> yeah. well, he basically he, he basically um paid uh paid Brad Pitt back for what he did because they they basically did like really brief cameos in each other's movies. Uh, oh yeah, Deadpool. The, yeah, the last Deadpool movie. Place. Yeah, so he did, he did more or less the same thing. Which is quite hilarious. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Which, oh yeah, David Leach as well, isn't it? He's I forgot he's he's the director, isn't he? David Leach. Um, oh, was he? Yeah, he is. Yeah. The same yeah, so oh, yeah, he did yeah, yeah, right, Deadpool yeah. too as well. Oh, so that's, he has more connections there. That makes sense. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that is the thing. That's yeah. The thing. Of this can be <laughs> so I think it's probably easier rather than story. Maybe just go for characters in each of their stories. Yeah. They... I mean, I, for me, like I, I feel like this movie, even though yeah, it, it wasn't trying to kind of be realistic. It was trying to be wacky, but I thought it was just a bit too much. Like I don't know, I just couldn't. I couldn't really get into it because I just couldn't take it seriously. You know, <laughs> I was actually like that at first, but as it went on, I was like, I, I've accepted this. Yeah. Let me just enjoy it. More. Yeah. <laughs> so you know what? I think it was. I think it was. You know what? I, I just just want to say. I just want to say because obviously you know you had all of the different perspectives. Like it told the story from each character's perspective. When it got to the water bottle, I was just like, Nah, man. I'm just like, I'm, like, I'm done. Like just, just take me out. Just take me out. Man. Oh, it's just, it's I love stupid. that, bro. I yeah. love that, man. Do you know what? I love. The water bottle, I think, I mean, some people might not like it, but I actually was a very important part of the narrative and takeaway because I think it was the only, I think it was kind of the only thing which was thrown in there, which was entirely unplanned and just by chance. None of the characters had any control over that water bottle and how it came to be there, whereas everything else was kind of masterminded by all the other characters. So I quite like that things did in a way hinge on something unpredictable mm. which no one could account yeah. for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's very, very true, man. <laughs> did you did you but, guys feel like um this move like what did you guys think of the script? I know this is kind of random, but what did you guys think of the script? Because I had a few problems with it. Like again, I yeah, I know this is meant not meant to be sort of taking itself seriously. It's meant to be like uh you know very funny sort of movie, but I just feel like okay the, the movie we were just talking about had a lot of like showing into the telling where this movie was just all exposition like just so much like telling you what's happening in the story you know so many flashbacks we're you know introducing a character that um would you call it that you know we don't know anything about all through sort of a flashback and i just feel like it's an ineffective way to tell to, to introduce the story uh, character sorry um, instead of actually, you know, allowing that character to, to but I, I mean, I can kind of see obviously why they did it because they just wanted to kind of set up certain situations, which obviously are later going to be paid off. Um, but I don't know, but for me, just the first part was kind of hard to get to, uh, the, the first. Yeah. Um, the only thing I will say, I kind of felt like that as well, um, because 
because I because we're right into a story and we're we're following these characters already, and then when the flashbacks come, you're like, oh, I was just enjoying the main story right, here. Well, yeah. why are we going back to this? So I did have moments like that, but as you kind of get used to it, I guess you're like, okay. I mean, as the story progresses, you get more and more curious, and then you kind of welcome the flashbacks. But when you have at the beginning, it does become a bit annoying. Um, but if we're talking about just like the main script of the story, I do like the way. <laughs> the, it's just so confusing to say, but like the way everything kind of meshes together and yeah. everything that's happened just cleverly goes onto some or something else. I think all that was really very very cool. But uh, yeah, the flashback stuff. Um, yeah, yeah it's a complicated one. I, I think. think. What are you gonna while. say? Yeah, no, I was going to say, like, like the, the, the characters, um, just with what, what Peter was saying about the characters that really have development, you kind of just get into the back. But for me, the characters didn't actually matter. Well, not all of the, the cast of characters. They didn't really matter that much. They were just kind of puns or devices used by White Death. I think, like you said already, Peter, to just kind of set things up. So in that sense... Even though they had screen time with the flashback and they did have some screen time and they do actually affect the story and the outcome, in a sense, they don't actually matter to the main plot of the film. Yeah. Makes sense. That's the impression I kind of I kind of got. Um, if, theoretically, they could have been anyone who fulfilled that role that the White Death wanted them to. As individuals, they didn't actually... Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. I mean, sort of, but they were actually right because they're all someone who had done something wrong to the White Death, so them being there is by his design as you find out at the end it's it's one of those movies where it'll give you a lot of information and it won't all make sense until the end mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Like, so if you're someone who can't too much. sit through a movie yeah if you're someone who can't really wait to the end to find out what all these points mean it will <laughs> throw you off but for me i, I actually enjoyed it because it's like okay you give me this information what am i supposed to do with it and you just have to wait and try and guess until they tell you at the end <laughs> yeah yeah i think these types of movies they do that a lot in terms of when introducing characters they do it via the medium of flashback because it's the quickest and effective way to do it for that type of movie because the focus of these types of movies is the story and getting to that major payoff at the end that all of the different in pieces of information that are dotted throughout the movie will lead up to and mesh together well so um i think I don't think there was a different way to really introduce these characters but through flashback because I don't think we needed to know that much about them. We just need to know yeah. why yeah. they're there and what they do and mm -hmm. and to what extent. I don't think we needed much more than that because they're just pieces to a bigger puzzle that we don't really see yet until we get to the end. So um, from my point of view, I really I I didn't have a problem with how these characters were introduced yeah. really. Mm. For no. example, with um, the wolf. You, you see his flashback, his wedding, and he's like, okay, he told me this, but I don't see anyone there that I recognise. And then further down, you get you find out, so Brad Pitt Cattrall was there, and you find out the Hornet was also there. It's just build, building up to the mm. big reveal. Yeah. Because you don't know, because when he get, tries to get off the train, you're thinking, why the hell is this guy attacking him? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. when you see the flashback, you're still like, but why is this guy attacking him? And then it's not till later, it was like, oh right, he recognized him from the wedding. That's yeah. why he that's why he just on site tried to stab him because he was the only one who survived. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that I feel like well, he was yeah, that, I feel like that guy was a the wolf guy was a wasted character though, like yeah, but I think I think that was the point because you didn't expect that. You would expect him to have a bigger role the way they set yeah, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, you wanna you wanna kind of root for it. When you see his flashback, you do wanna like his whole fam family was murdered, like so, you know what I mean? Yeah. So he he's a character which you think oh like he's gonna team up, you wanna root for him to get to the end. And he's like the first cast member to properly die, isn't he? Like he gets yeah, 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 yeah. the first one to go so yeah it's kind of sad you know what <laughs> that's another thing that I would bring up brad pitt's character pissed me off sometimes the fact that there's some people that you root for and then he kills accidentally or something for instance that one <laughs> and then bloody um tangerine obviously that was the most like oh that one that one really annoyed well, me the, the, the tangerine kill <laughs> was an accident it was more of an accident though because understanding he, he, yeah, he was basically just trying to defend himself but um, I kind of do agree with you. I, I didn't like Brad Pitt's character at all. And like, I think uh, one of the main reasons is because he's not clearly defined as a protagonist. 
Like at first you're like, okay, this is the character we're supposed to be. Um, yeah, you're supposed to be rooting for. But then you realize, oh, yeah. like, he's a sociopath. Like, he do- he doesn't really have any. He doesn't really have any like normal reactions. Like, he, for example, you know, he kills somebody or he sees he sees somebody like a dead person, and like most people would be like, oh shit, this is a big deal. But but he's just like, eh. he's, like he just says some like like witty remark, and I'm like, no, that's not how real people react. <laughs> like, I'm just like. I don't, yeah. I, I don't feel anything for this character because he's he's more like a like a video game character than an actual human yeah. being. Yeah. Um, is he the only character which doesn't actually which doesn't have kind of a heartfelt or impactful backstory as well? Yeah, that's like, true. Is he actually, yeah, yeah, he's that's the only one. That he's just there for yeah, he, that's yeah. gone wrong. He's almost just like an observer to the yeah. the story or the other interconnected. Yeah. Events. Pretty much, yeah. He's, he's not meant to be there. He's 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 not meant to be there. I think that's part of the, the reasons that he he was there by accident because yeah yeah, yeah. Um, right. turned the job down. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, that kind of so, that kind of ties into the theme of the whole movie. What was it? It was like um um was it chance or like uh, fate? Fate. Really? fate. That's it. Yeah. Fate. Fate. So fate versus destiny or something. Yeah, yeah. That's it. I, I, that so yeah. I guess that kind of speaks to that theme. Um, but yeah, I still didn't like him. Um, but, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But well, I don't think he's meant to be a likable character. Be fair, I think he's just meant yeah, to, so, yeah. he's just who you're seeing the stories eyes from because he's just he's in, involved in all of this chaos and he's just not meant to be there. Yeah, he's yeah. Just, he was he thought he was just getting a simple job and and it turned out he'd been lured there uh, unsub, uh, unwittingly because someone because someone else was meant to be there instead. Right. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I thought he, I thought Brad, I thought Brad Pitt played it very well. Though. I thought he was hilarious. Yeah, I thought, yeah, yeah, I yeah, thought, I thought all the characters played their roles very well, and I thought yeah. they were quite hilarious. And and these are like cold blooded killers. Like he's a mercenary as well. He's trying to reform himself, but he's he, he's he's a mercenary. Like he's he's not meant to be. Like that. I, I, I like on that, that train was a trained killer. Mm. Yeah. 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 I wanted to yeah, say, so these weren't normal people. No, I, I, I wanted to say one of my favorite scenes. Like one, I think one of the best scenes of the whole film um, was the scene bet- with Lemon and I think the prince. You know the um, the, the lucky sort of schoolgirl. Yeah. Where yeah. you know he drinks the the water that's been spiked, and mm-hmm. you're kind of you're kind of one you're you're waiting for it to kick in. You're like, when's this gonna happen? <laughs> yeah. I just yeah. love the whole suspense and the whole kind of. Um, because uh, what they call it, like dramatic irony, where the audience knows something that the characters don't know. Um, yeah, 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 kind yeah. of waiting for it to happen. So I, I, that, I just love that scene, man. That was just so good. Uh, yeah. I, and, it was, and they kept drinking more of it. Yeah, as well. kept drinking like, more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. That was yeah, yeah. Well, um, I, I actually thought. Um, do you guys? Yeah, I, I actually him uh, in that scene. I thought him and Yuichi died, but I thought that was game over. Yeah, both yeah. Of them. Were we, were we supposed? I'm guessing we were supposed to think they were dead. Well, definitely, yeah, was yeah. certainly with him. I'm not sure about Yuichi. I'm not sure how you son survived. Yeah, because well, he only got shot once, so yeah, yeah, yeah. He, was, he was just left and locked in their lives. Yeah, yeah I thought both of them died. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they. I, I did like yeah, their yeah, characters though. Right. <laughs> yeah, because they they kind of had like a redeeming um, arc at the end, didn't they? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. One yeah, of my and favorites. I think they set up that misdirection as well because they talked about they they had um, Lemon and Tangerine had that banter about are you wearing your vest? And he said I don't need to wear a vest. I'm a fresh. And I was like, well, yeah. And it turned out he did wear his vest after yeah. after that conversation yeah. as well because you were super. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I just yeah, I love the Yeah, Lemon, 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 it is Lemon is the black guy, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Le- Lemon's character growing on about so that was hilarious. Like you could tell, <laughs> you, you could tell like th- those two were just quirky characters of quirks, dude. Like they were hilarious to this. Their, their their banter and their bickering and their kind of their chemistry and also kind of their their back and forth insults, which are was just hilarious to watch on screen. But then obviously you get the contrast yeah. that they really do deeply care for each other. And again, another mm-hmm. random part scene when they were kids. You kind of you know they are here's why they're brothers. They grew up together. Were young and they really deeply care about each other. Um, yeah. So they, they they were probably yeah probably my favorite characters. Um, yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah when Tangerine yeah when Tangerine died at the end line, just when, when he got shot in the net, he's like, no, that bitch. <laughs> 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 
You uh, just figured the thing out, bro. She's the diesel, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But again, again, it was sick. It was very sick how he tapped the diesel, the stick on the back, on the back of her. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, like that was that was great, man. That was that kind of like yeah, that that fan service moment. Like yeah, he's got you, bro. Like do you know what I mean? Yeah. Was, and that's beautiful. the very reason why it pissed me off what happened after bloody <laughs> Brad Pitt's character, man. What? <laughs> <laughs> it was luck, bro. Goddamn. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's just trying to save a little girl, even though she's evil. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess. I think, well, I, I, I think, I actually think her character was the character I liked the least. Um, yeah, like you're supposed to, you're, you're not supposed to like her. To, I think. Yeah, you're not yeah, supposed but, to like well, well, I didn't, I didn't, it's not, it's not that I hated her, but I just... To, after all the build up like she's met you assume the mastermind behind this and kind of builds up to just daddy family issues oh yeah yeah I thought this was going to be quite deep and dark or she was beyond this but it's just daddy issues I just wanted to <laughs> yeah. and when, when, when push came to shove I think she didn't need, did she, she had the opportunity to kill her father did she or did her plan not work no yeah. no the plan was for basically her Him to shoot yeah blow yeah. up in it, but she, he, she meant so little to her that to him that he didn't yeah. even bother to shoot her. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I think that was the biggest. Like, it was like, damn, yeah. like, we just yeah. wasted my time. Yeah, yeah. No, I guess it's, it's gonna, gonna work. Yeah. Yeah. I think, no. I think, I think, I think if they really wanted you to care about equally, because she didn't, she did, she have a, she didn't have a backstory cut scene either, did she? Well, no, because that was because we couldn't we couldn't know her back. Yeah, you didn't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think maybe maybe at that part of the movie, even just the back a short backstory where you kind of get the impression of how her father neglected. I don't think I care much about her to want a backstory at that point. (laughs) (laughs) She'd done so much evil shit. And yeah, yeah, I think yeah. part of her character was the absurdity of her just being a spoiled rich girl, basically, yeah, and yeah. just being upset her daddy didn't give her attention, and she done yeah. all of this shit just because of that, because she have daddy issues, and it just uh, it just speaks to someone like that that would be that narcissistic to do all this, push a kid off a fucking roof just to get a man on there so they can like it's just to go to those extent. I think it just plays to the absurdity of, of the movie and, and the characters within it that it that should yeah. go that far. I, I loved your death scene though. Her death scene was just. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was great. We're the it was great. The <laughs> It took a cliche. Karma, karma, it, bro. It took karma. a cliche that I hate, and it actually made it make sense. You know, yeah, because, exactly, yeah. like how many people actually get hit, you know, in real life <laughs> on the road. But <laughs> they explain, they explain yeah. why, why that works. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask is: Was anyone disappointed by the reveal of? Because you know, Michael Shannon's character, um, I think the white, white death. Yeah. White tag. No, white, white tag. I want to. The white yeah, tag. White. The white tag. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you mean um, the feel of the actor? Like by his, it was him. Yeah, because no, because he he's his character got so much build up throughout the whole movie, and then yeah. when you actually when he actually kind of uh, you know is introduced, well no, when he actually when you actually meet him, he's not quite lives up to the you know to to. He was menacing looking, I guess. Yeah, not just or... looking, but just you know how he acts, and you know I don't know. I was just expecting something more. Uh, yeah, you're right. I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, because because because. That scene where he's got the mask and he does the Russian roulette thing was so badass. I was yeah. like, holy shit, this guy must be. Thing. Yeah. So when when he does get revealed, it is a bit of a, a bit of a letdown. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And Michael yeah. Shannon's a great actor. Like I love his uh, is, yeah. acting, but I don't know. In this movie, he just kind of didn't really bring it. I don't know. Um, I just yeah, I just I just felt like he wasn't as badass as they kind of built him up to be. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Snake was more scary than him. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> But I did like I did really like Channing Tatum, man. He he cracked me up every time he was on the screen. Yeah, I was cracking up, man. I was like, the first question he asked is it sexual? Yeah. Texting? Is it texting? So yeah, man. That, this this movie definitely had like you know little sprinkles of gold dust like lit, layered throughout it. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd say I didn't really like. Love it, but I didn't hate it either. Like I, I, I was definitely in, um, had a good time. I was definitely entertained. Yeah. Um, I just feel like the script could have been better. The script could have, um, I don't know. It could, it just didn't quite live up. It was like trying to be like Tarantino, uh, Guy Ritchie, but not quite on that level. And don't get me started on the um, 
the train wreck at the end, I was like, like, there's no <laughs> way anyone would have survived this, man. They should all but be it was, dead. But it, but it was funny. But it was funny. It was funny, though. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny to watch. Right. Oh, it is, yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if you're, yeah, yeah. If you look at it as, yeah, it's not actually real life, it's a cartoon, it's an anime, then, yeah, yeah. I suppose you can buy Isn't it. There, and it's, it's, part of the point of the movie is that it's fate, it's luck, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. No one should survive that. That's <laughs> kind of the point, is that, that it's already predetermined that yeah. <laughs> that meal was... Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh, you guys... I do want to take this point to quickly give a shout out to uh, Hiroyuki Sanada. He, he was kick ass in that film. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, I love yeah, he, he did. Another he did. reason why I'm biased because I love him. I, I yeah, do yeah, love him. Whenever he does his samurai shit, bro, I just like, <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm in, I'm, yeah. <laughs> Because he wasn't in it for most of the movie. I was like, is he actually yeah, going to yeah. do anything? I was, like, I was like, oh, did they just name drop him in here just, just yeah. to get people excited? And I was like, oh shit, he's on the train. Okay. <laughs> Something's happening. <Yeah. laughs> Yeah, and he was he was a very important character. I guess he was a very, yeah very important character. It was about yeah, it was about it was about his revenge as much as the White Death revenge as well. Yeah. Um, so it was good to see those two have the clash at the end as well. Train limited pacing, very cool much. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Anything you guys wanted to add, or did you want to go to ratings? Or... Uh, one thing I did want to quickly add is that um, one thing that really actually stood out to me in the film is the lighting. And I don't mean just the like um, neon lights and stuff that you see fairly a lot in these films, but like even the ambient lighting and stuff, like in that hospital room in the very first scene, I thought it was just so beautiful. And it was only recently I, I learned, because um, I kind of do... Uh, kind of learn not learn so i kind of watch youtube videos on like filmmaking and stuff just to see how it's done stuff and i never realized how much um time and effort and and like intricacy there is to like lighting a room and stuff so now that the, when i look, look at that film look at look at any film really but particularly that film the way all the rooms are lit and like how, how much thought was put into every little scene and stuff was really really well done um like i said from the first bit when it's in the hospital room that's when you noticed it and then obviously you, you kind of enjoy it because it's japan as well and they're kind of known for all these crazy lights and stuff in the trains and in the cities and stuff so um yeah they really took advantage of that and just made it look quite visually beautiful at, in certain scenes and stuff oh yeah. So, yeah i really appreciate that just wanted to mention it yeah that's a good great point you bring up actually because um yeah when you're watching a movie it's kind of easy to forget that like you know the shot everything that you see in the shot and obviously the way it's lit uh the way yeah the lights hit each actor and you know the sets nothing is an accident it's all deliberately mm. played everything's deliberately placed there for a reason so yeah it, it, it is very um stylistic and um you know you 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 kind of um really get drawn into it it's just beautiful how everything's uh, lit up but yeah, no, I did notice the set designs were great, and even the costume designs as well. Like everybody had like a distinct way of you know they were dressed, and you know the look as well. Yeah, pretty much kind of like you know the 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 culture just oozed out of the screen. You know the the fact that it had this um, well, I mean Japanese appropriation, but the you know the the setting of being in Tokyo and uh, it, it kind of transports you to that. You know, being in that that sort of <clears throat> surroundings, and you, it's really believable. Even if they shot it in, I don't know, maybe they shot it in America, but you wouldn't have thought, thought that otherwise. Yeah, so that's a, that's yeah, a great true. point. Actually, it's a really good point. Um, just to just to touch on one other thing as well, something uh, helped me resonate a lot with um, Hiroyuki's character. Um, when you find out that, like, um, obviously, he's his his wife was killed by the white death right and like he managed to save um his son or his son was yeah. alive but his son is indirectly working for the white death the person who killed his mother and obviously i he doesn't know but that's like another point which kind of really makes you makes you feel for, um through his character like you know when he says like you know father was meant to protect his son but what are you doing like kind of thing i presume his father has an idea of what he's doing um that was quite a powerful thing to see unfold and make you really feel even though you don't get to see him a lot you feel like it's very great greater than what you see on film actually. yeah yeah cool. all right guys i'm ready to go to the ratings if 
that's okay with you yeah, guys, yeah. Cool. Um, cool so yeah I thought, I thought this was you know very flashy exciting sort of you know action driven fast paced thriller um, with obviously added humour as well um, you know I like the style of directing I thought it was more kind of style over substance though like there was times when I felt like I was watching a music video especially with some of the introductions you know flashback <laughs> introductions I was like what the, what the heck is this but um, you know when it gets to the midpoint um, and it starts you, you kind of start to understand where the film is heading um, <laughs> where the film is, is actually you know heading um, pun intended, sorry. But, <laughs> sorry. I that. Um, yeah, no, you, you kind of, I, I kind of started to get into it and I started to kind of like, you know, root for the characters and, you know, the surprises and all the cameos and, you know, all the, you know, the bits of attention to the, oh, the, the setups and the payoffs. There's a lot of payoffs for things that are set up in the beginning. So that really kind of boosted the enjoyment of the movie. Um, overall, I did have a good time. I felt the script was a bit weak in places and could have been improved. And some of the characters were wasted. But um, uh, yeah, overall, I think I'd give it a six out of 10. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I think, I think for me, I, I'll, I'll go next. I, I very much enjoyed watching the movie. I didn't look up on it a lot beforehand. I think I watched the trailer like once. Um, but yeah, I definitely enjoyed the fact that it was kind of based in in Japan, and you do kind of get that retro vibe with I think Subi mentioned like the neon lighting and stuff, um, which really helps bring out that kind of comic booky kind of feel to it. Um, so visually watching it was very pleasing and attractive. Um, the story, I, I like how the story progressed with all the characters kind of having their own kind of backstories, and in the end, it leads up to the big reveal where you find out how all the stories interconnect. But until that point. I did keep finding myself guessing like you know who is going to be disposable who is going to make it to the end so to watch each of the character the main cast kind of die off one at a time um and then it narrows down obviously to ladybug um and um hiroyuki and his son that that was quite um a good way i think to piece the movie together and then obviously you've got that hilarious bottle scene as well which they kind of throw in for some kind of comedic value at the end um so yeah i think um in, in a way the movie was meant to be maybe a bit thought-provoking as well to make you think about like, you know the whole fate versus destiny thing within it how much things do you have control over how much things you don't um and yeah the action sequences were very crisp and, and well done especially the the sword fighting scenes so i think i would give it a comfortable i'll, I'll give it an eight personally um i, I really enjoyed enjoyed watching it um didn't nap throughout the whole film <laughs> uh, oh god that was an eight yeah, eight. Yeah, eight. Yeah, eight. Yeah, I would, I would, I would give it an eight. I really found it fun to watch. Um, I enjoyed this movie greatly. I thought it was a good laugh. It, I like movies that have you keep you guessing. So you think it's gonna go one way and it turns left, and then you're going and then when it, it makes you keep thinking about what's gonna happen next, it's just very exciting. And as much as Brad Pitt's character was annoying, I enjoyed following his journey through that train. Um, yeah, it looked great. The, so the fighting scenes were, were very well done. I think the choreography in it was spot on. The gun fights, the hand-to-hand -hand fights, even the sword fight was was great. And then the cinematography where it slows down certain shots, like when the train, the bottle floats through the train, <laughs> and when the the train actually crashes and you can see them all floating and looking around, I thought that was really well done. So for me, I'd give this a solid nine. Mm. Cool. Uh, I guess I can go next. So, um, so I was quite like Peter at the beginning, where um, I did feel like it was kind of, kind of, kind of mimicking Guy Ritchie and Quentin Turner, and I wasn't fully on board because I didn't feel like it was up to that level. Um, at times, I did get kind of annoyed at the. Um, <laughs> I think maybe I think Bad Bits character a bit um, every now and then um, because um, I think he just used humor a bit too much sometimes because sometimes it's good to kind of balance that out but the fact that he used it way too much during that film kind of kind of annoyed me at times um, but once I kind of accepted what I was gonna watch um, which was maybe maybe like about after half an hour and then I just like okay cool okay things are actually starting happening now things 
are getting interesting because obviously new characters kind of go in the way and like new events happen in that story and I'm like okay so it's getting quite interesting now and I've already accepted it's going to be a crazy one so I'm, I'm going to switch my logic brain off and just kind of get you know full of, full on uh, ride with this whole luck um, scenario which uh, like I said I really enjoyed that it was all based on luck because I think that's a big thing in like Asian culture in um, China and Japan um, they, they, they are big on like that kind of stuff with luck and stuff and you know things like the number four that is represent bad luck all this kind of stuff so um the fact that that's what the movie was about and they really you know he used that to the to the full extent and just went crazy with it was actually quite fun um and like i said the light everything with the lighting and stuff i uh, really thought visually it was beautiful um i actually like the soundtrack as well like they, they, they did like japanese versions of like really good songs like the bgs and all the all these other songs which is very very cool as well um i really enjoyed that and um yeah the story was very cool um character wise some people i liked some people i didn't like obviously but the actual overall uh story and the way everything kind of interconnects like when you kind of think of how do you write something like this it kind of blows your mind because <laughs> so much stuff happens and one thing leads to one thing you think how did this guy just make it all interconnect like this and it does do it beautifully and it's one of those things where i think if i did watch it a second time maybe you'll notice something that you didn't notice before maybe um so i do like it when you know a film might require a second watch if there's like little easter eggs that you didn't catch the first time that you might catch the second time and um yeah i definitely enjoyed it um so i will give it a 7.5 out of 10. <laughs> yeah i had to put the point in there point five cool. okay uh last place um i'm i'm with cameron on this i thoroughly enjoyed this movie from start to finish i loved every second of it um i love the characters in terms of how they were portrayed the characters that you didn't like the i think they were portrayed very well and the characters you did like i thought portrayed also very well uh the choreography the fight scenes the art direction i thought were all all brilliant uh the way the story was told and the bits of information they give you throughout the movie that don't make sense until the final bit i love movies like that the guy ritchie quentin tarantino type of movies and i thought this done a really good job of of pulling that off i can't wait to watch this movie again to be honest i can't wait until i i watch i can watch this movie again and again and again i thoroughly enjoyed it i thought the comedy was quite funny as well and um i, I like the fact that it didn't take itself too seriously and that um yeah i like the fact it didn't take itself too seriously and that it, it just it knew what it was and it played up to it uh, in a very funny way but the story also it did a very good job of, of keeping the narrative as the main focus uh, throughout the movie even when it was being comedic so I thought overall um, I would give this a 9.5 I really like this movie right. nice oh, upward trajectory yeah high scores yeah. across the board then so this is a good movie then yeah, yeah. Ooh, nice diverse cast as well. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed it and we appreciate all comments, positive or positive. Oh yeah, I'm joking, but yeah, seriously, if you enjoyed our review today, please like, comment or subscribe below and we hope to see you all next time.